morning my friends, your old pal Jordan the Lion. I decided to start our vlog today over in Beverly Hills and give Ja a little change of pace. We're hanging out in the Will Rogers Park over here and we're going to do something for our vlog today. It's not too far away from here. A longtime resident of Beverly Hills, a man that made his name as a very famous detective named Columbo. He had a unique little eye twitch. I'm going to tell you why and I'm going to tell you the story of how he became Columbo, what he put into it, and the whole story of Peter Falk. Today's special sunglasses are for Chris Wade. He requested I do something Peter Falk and didn't have a problem with that because I love Peter Falk. So Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Here's our setting for today. Beautiful park here. Right across from the Beverly Hills Hotel, which is right there. And of course, there's everybody's best friend, Ja. Dedicated in 1915. Named after Will Rogers. I never met a man I didn't like. Actually, a pretty cool little park to check into every once in a while. I've shown you guys this before. Ironically, the day that I did, it was actually in the Lana Turner vlog, I stopped off and was jokingly mentioning that George Michael had been arrested in the bathroom over there for, well, let's say propositioning someone, and it was like that very night that he passed away. Now, we actually saw this last time we were here, and I thought this was great. They have a time capsule here. Can't wait to see what's in it. I don't think any of us would be alive for it, though. It's 2114. Now, Peter Falk is especially interesting to me because it seems like he lived an entire life before he ever became an actor. I mean, he had had a surgically had his eye removed surgically when he was three years old. He had, I mean, wanted to be a baseball player, basketball player. In fact, growing up in high school, one of his favorite stories that he liked to tell people is when he was playing baseball in high school, the umpire made a bad call and he pulled his glass eye out, put it in the umpire's hand and said, here, maybe this will help. He told this story pretty much the rest of his life. He always got a kick out of it and he actually saw a lot of humor in himself. One of his favorite things he said ever was he loved to see people do impressions of him, whether it be him or, or Columbo or whatever it was, he always said like if anybody had a good impression, he said it always tickled him to see it. Now, his early years before he was an actor, he went to uh, University of Wisconsin, he had been in the Navy, he had also went to Syracuse, he had lived in Europe doing um, manual labor. I mean, the guy had just done everything. And it's pretty crazy to find out that in 1960, this same man who did this entire lifetime of things before would in the same year be nominated and be the first one ever to be nominated for the first uh, Academy Award and Emmy in the same year. And then he would do the same thing the very next year. So two years in a row, he was the very first person to ever be nominated for both awards. Now, of course, Peter Falk will always be known for his portrayal of Columbo, and he was cool with that because he played it for, you know, the better part of 30 years. And he really made that thing his own. Especially because he wasn't even the first choice for Columbo. And there you can see the Beverly Hills Hotel back there. Yeah, interestingly enough, Peter Falk was not the first choice. And in fact, even after he kind of requested to be Columbo, made the first made-for-TV movie starring himself as Columbo. They came to him and said, we want to make a TV show, and he said no. See the fish in the pond here? And the little fountain? So when Columbo was first created, the first person that they actually wanted to be Columbo was Bing Crosby. Believe it or not, they never saw Columbo as a disheveled detective. In fact, they never saw him with a cigar. They wanted Bing Crosby to, you know, be in a suit, smoke a pipe. However, Bing Crosby had retired, and when they asked him to do the role, he said, you know, I like the part, I like the script, I like everything, but I hear bad things about doing TV, I'm retired, I like playing golf, and I just don't think I'm interested. So then they wanted Lee Cobb, and as the director and writer said, turned out to be kind of a blessing in disguise that they didn't get Lee Cobb because he ended up dying five or six years after they started the series. And as I told you, Peter Falk ended up playing Columbo for the better part of three decades. 
Now originally, apparently Peter Falk heard through his agent, William Morris, that this script existed. He got the script and then he called the writers and said, a kill to play Columbo. And they liked the sound of that. They had already seen him in a lot of things. He was already established actor by that point. He was an established theater actor. He had done a lot of stage productions. He had done a lot of movies already by that point. They did an audition. They said he didn't even actually have to really audition. They said there was no screen test or anything. He just kind of knew he'd be good for it after one meeting. Now let's head over to his house. We'll tell you some more of the story over there. That's rather interesting for a, uh, a bench seat, right? Well, here it is. I guess you could call this the house that Columbo built. Now, like I was saying, basically Peter Falk wanted to be Columbo, signed on to do it for that two-hour movie, that made-for-TV movie that they were going to do, and then they go, the head of the network goes, that's it, TV, we're doing this. They asked Peter Falk and he says no. And they're like, why? And basically, it's he didn't want to do 22 episodes. They said it was going to be 22 episodes of, uh, for the series per year. He just didn't want to do that. He, um, he was already signed on to do a Neil Simon play that he had like a, a deadline for when he was starting. And he also, they said, was a, an avid golfer and was really good friends with John Cassavetes and Beg Ben Gazzara and liked to hang out with him. So they said they kind of just viewed it or they thought that it was just um, interrupting his social life. And um, so what ended up happening was at the time, the network had something called The Wheel. And what they would do is instead of doing 22 episodes of a series for a season, they would give each, each show one night a month. So say, the first Monday of each week or each month would be Columbo night. So that's eventually after the second movie how they kind of talked him into doing it was that they would only do a couple of these. Now Peter Falk himself said one of the best things about working on Columbo was that Steven Spielberg was an early director and Steven Spielberg did things he said that were uncustomary for filming. He said, he said, in fact, there would be times I didn't even know that where the camera was because Steven would have the camera across the street up in a window doing a, like a telephoto shot. So he ended up creating this character and he said, just, they said, as he would do it, he would just keep finding more and more things that made sense for Columbo to have. Like, even though Peter Falk was a chain smoker with cigarettes, he just liked the prop of the cigar, and for the first year, um, he was using the cigar constantly, and they actually um, wrote it out at the end of the first season, but he liked the prop so much that he brought it back in. It was also his idea to do the, uh, the trench coat. That was a trench coat that he bought on a rainy day in New York City, and he even said that was the same trench coat he used for pretty much the whole run of the show. Um, they had, you know, like a backup one here, here and there, like two backup ones, I think he said, but he said the first run, um, he wore that trench coat and then when they brought the series back, he wore the same trench coat again. He also handpicked his, uh, some of the lines and he also handpicked his car. They had picked out three cars that they thought would be, you know, great cars for Columbo. And he looked at him and said he didn't really feel e any of them as being a Columbo car. So he, uh, they, they had a warehouse at Universal at the time with like just, um, like levels and levels of cars. And he saw that Peugeot and was like, that's it. That's our car. That's what we want. So pretty crazy story. Now, the guy was, you know, 30 years being Columbo. How crazy is that? Now, one of the things that he's really well known for beyond being a great actor is that he was a phenomenal artist. And you can just imagine how much art he created in here. He said one day in New York City when he was, you know, doing theater, he walked by a, um, an art school and saw like a woman posing with just a light on her and saw everybody drawing her. And he said, that's my, I love that and it became a passion of his and he ended up you know um, having a dealer and would create art most of his life and in fact my friend kevin that you guys met yesterday that's one of his goals for his life is to make enough money to afford to buy a peter falk piece of art and by all accounts he was somebody that everybody loved and if you've followed any of my vlogs when I went to Budapest, I actually went to the Peter Falk Columbo statue and they even had the dog right there beside him. I mean, I just thought that was so great. 
Columbo was so classic, you know, I mean, it was, you never saw the wife, that was like a running gag. Another running gag for Columbo was that he always did this, you know, right when he would be ready to leave a house or you thought it, something was over, he would always go, just one more thing. <laughs> I always loved that. And one of the other crazy things about Columbo that I thought was always pretty fascinating was that it was one of the few shows that started out by showing you who committed the murder or who committed the crime. And then the whole show is based around how Columbo was going to figure it out and how he was going to get it pinned on them, which was just a whole different concept. I mean, think of, you know, most of the shows at that time, anything that had to do with a detective, it was always a suspense-filled show. And this was still a suspense-filled show, but it was also part comedy, it was part drama. And like I said, the suspense came in, how was Columbo going to, you know, set this person up for their downfall? So, here it is. The longtime home of... Peter Falk. Check out some of his art. He did a lot of stuff with uh, charcoal on paper that's really beautiful. Really had mastered the figure, how to, uh, how to replicate the human body and things like that. Long live Columbo. Now that's definitely one that we hope that they don't try and bring back because I don't think anybody in the world could be Columbo other than Peter Falk. Well, here's his eternal resting place. They actually have the gate locked here so I can't go any further past this. But younger generations also knew him for being Grandpa and the Princess Bride. Unfortunately, he ended up passing away of complications Catching pneumonia, I believe, um, while having Alzheimer's. Passed away in 2011, not too long ago. Says, Peter Falk, I'm not here. I'm home with Shira, which was his wife. So I can't get in there to put your sunglasses right there, but Chris, hope this vlog was special to you. Peter Falk was a great man. All right, park trip number two. No buddies here either. That's a bummer. At least he can run around here freely. You wanna run around like a free man? Well, he's been running around a little bit, but other than that, I think it's just too hot for any of the dogs to wanna be out here right now, so he's all alone. Just trying to get him to play with the ball. I threw it, and then when he realized there was no other dog to go get it, he didn't care. Hey, Jaw, what's this? See, he might go to it, but he probably isn't going to bring it back unless there's another dog there waiting on it. Can I have it? Nope. I always love that cemetery that we went to today, the Westwood Memorial. It's Pierce Brothers Westwood. That's where Marilyn Monroe is buried, Frank Zappa, uh, Betty Page, Dorothy Stratton, uh, Roy Orbison, people like that. And as I was driving off, I thought to myself, what was I thinking? I should have done another vlog while I was here because there's so many people I could vlog there just right off the top of my head. So don't be surprised if we end up there again tomorrow because I am kicking myself for not going there and doing another vlog while I was there today. Because as I was leaving, I was thinking about some of the names I saw on the headstones and I was like, jeez, I should have just done another vlog while I was all the way out here. So I may be inspired to go back again. What you doing? You want drink? What are you mad because there's no buddies here? I hear you down there squeaking and squawking. What you doing, buddy? Well, Ja, I hate to break it to you, but a homeless lady just told me that aliens got you. Apparently you're an alien and I didn't know. Well, I guess I'll have to live with it. She didn't really like my response when I said, well, it happens. She just kept saying, it happens? It happens? That's all you can say is it happens? Yeah, I guess it happens. All right, just got home and had some mail waiting for us. And that's what was inside. I may not have an original nudie suit, but I can sure support nudie by wearing a t-shirt. All right, gang, you may notice that I'm dressed up. And I mentioned to you two days ago that Michael had called and asked me for a favor. I told him I had two passes for the Magic Castle and that's what he wanted. He wanted to know if I could help him bring a couple of Swedes to the Magic Castle. So that's what we're going to do now. 
They uh, just texted me. They should be here in about a minute. So we're going to head out and uh, relive that experience. We found out if you, even though you have a specific dinner time and show time, you can come anytime after 5 p.m. and start enjoying the night. So we didn't know that last night, so or last time we were there. So this time we're going to get there a couple hours early. Let's go. <laughs> so I'm just telling Michael what the vlog's about today, and he was telling me his nickname as an accountant. Tell me, tell him what your nickname was. Yeah, so as an auditor, I, my, my nickname was uh, Columbo because it, uh, you know a lot of times yeah, I sit there and I interview the person I'm auditing, and and I had all these questions, and it was done, and then after that I was packed up, and and I walked out to the doorway, and then I was always like, one more question. <laughs> and many of them called me Columbo. Yeah. In the street. Yeah. We're getting a show before the show. Damn. Yeah, that's that's what Molly does to you. Yeah. He, moonwalking almost. Gliding. I wonder what he's having. All right, we have arrived at the Magic Castle. This time I brought my good camera. Even though I know they won't allow them inside, I do know they allow it outside. So, got a uh, a group full of Swedes here, hey, and we're going to uh, experience the Magic Castle once again. And here's a Hello. Swede. Here's another Swede. Hey. One I didn't meet. Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you, man. And here's Michael. Everybody's favorite. You haven't seen him since Sweden. Well, other than earlier in this vlog. All right, so we're about to go in. So the next time I come, I decided I'm actually gonna bring um, some lion hearts with me, and we're gonna do like a little field trip here for the vlog. We'll talk about it afterward. But for now, it's Swedes night. All right, this is the last place we can take any photos in here. Once you enter through these doors, it's no photography or they kick you out. So we're not messing around today. Let's see if it understands Swedish. Open sesame. Oh my god! Well, we had a great night here. I think it was even better than the first time. So we're gonna call it a night. I want to thank Len Paxton for becoming my newest Patreon. And if you've never had a chance to come to the Academy of Magical Arts, I highly recommend you do. Have a great night, everyone, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Good bye.